So this is our red velvet cake with a cream cheese frosting. Tell me this does not look so perfect. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Myra from Low Carb Love, and today we're gonna be making a keto red velvet cake with a cream cheese frosting. So red velvet is my absolute favorite cake in this entire world. I actually used to be super obsessed with Susie cakes. I don't know if you know about Susie cakes, but um, yeah, I've been super in love with their red velvet cake forever. Anyway, so today's recipe is like the closest thing we're gonna get to a keto friendly version of Susie cake. So let's get started. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go over the ingredients. I will show you the little um, cake pan that I have, which is a little heart, super beautiful. Um, I'll see if I can find it and link it down below. I've had this for like three years. Um, and you are going to do, you know, put a little piece of parchment. What I did was just kind of like traced it and then cut it out so that it fits perfectly. Um, we will be using some spray so that it's like, you know, doesn't stick. Then we have just pretty, these are all pretty basic ingredients that you should have, which is your um, almond flour, baking powder, sweetener. We're gonna add a little coffee to intensify the chocolate taste. The one thing um, that doesn't add to the flavor, but I mean, you just can't have a red velvet cake that's not red. So we're using a little bit of food coloring. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's just go right into it and I'll walk you through, I'll walk you through step by step. Okay, so now we have our almond flour and this is just um, blanched almond flour. This is one and a half cups. And what we're gonna do first is mix in all of our dry ingredients, okay? So now we do three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. I use the Dutch process, but you can have whatever you have on hand. Then we're doing some coffee. And so the instant coffee, again, is just gonna intensify the chocolate flavor. And that is one teaspoon, okay? And then we have our sweetener. So this is um, powdered allulose. I like using allulose, but you can literally use your sweetener of choice. And that's half cup, half cup of sweetener. And then we have two tablespoons of baking powder. Okay, so we're just gonna add that in. And I like adding all of my dry ingredients before, like together, okay? And then we add the, the, um, the wet. So then we have a half teaspoon of some salt. We are using some real salt. I will link that down below. It is unrefined and comes straight from the mine in Utah. So um, yeah, that's the salt that I use. So now let's go ahead and mix our dry ingredients together. Okay, so now that everything's mixed together, let's go ahead and get started on our wet ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna do full eggs. So this is three eggs. Okay, so now we have a teaspoon of sour cream, three eggs, a teaspoon of sour cream. Now we have our vanilla extract, which is one tablespoon if you're using uh, like a vanilla flavoring or one teaspoon if you're using a vanilla extract because it's a lot stronger. Then we have a quarter cup of almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. And now let's go ahead and mix everything together. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients. I mean, mix our wet ingredients. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and pour in our wet ingredients. And don't forget, make sure that your oven is preheated at 350 degrees. So you just wanna give it a rough mix, something like this, just so that the ingredients are somewhat combined. And now we can add our food coloring, okay? So then we finish mixing it. Okay, so this is the food coloring that we're using. You could pretty much use any, you know, any food coloring as long as it's red. This one, you could pretty much find it like at Walmart. It's the Wilton brand. And now we're gonna go ahead and scoop some in. Okay, so we're gonna do about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. This is what, you know, it's looking like. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and add that in. Yeah, and we might need to add more. I'm just kind of, I don't wanna add too much. So we'll start with, that was about a half a teaspoon. So we might have to go in with a teaspoon. This looks really good. I'm just gonna add a little more just so that it gives it that real deep um, red flavor. I mean, the red color. So all together, I would add about a teaspoon of food coloring, okay? Red food coloring. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pan and baking pan, and we're gonna add some avocado oil. Okay, 
away. And now we're just gonna put our little piece of parchment right inside so it fits perfectly. Okay. And now we're gonna spray it one more time on top. And now we're just going to pour our batter in. All right, and now let's just pour it in. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna bake at 350 degrees. Let's go to the oven. Okay, so our red velvet cake is gonna go in for 20 minutes. We'll come back and check on it and see if it needs a little more time. So while the cake is cooking, we're gonna get started on the cream cheese buttercream frosting. So this is probably my absolute favorite frosting in the whole wide world. Um, what we're gonna need for this is a full bar, like eight ounces of cream cheese. And you want them, you want everything to be room temperature so that everything kind of blends well together. So we have eight ounces of cream cheese. That's uh, room temperature. It's gonna go straight into our stand mixer. And you can always make these things in a uh, hand mixer as well. But right now, you know, this is what I have, this is what I use. Uh, one stick of butter, so this is eight tablespoons of butter. And this is also room temperature, as you can see. It's not softened, it's not melted, it's just room temperature, okay? And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna cream this first and then we will add the rest of the ingredients. So the goal is for this to be nice, light, and fluffy. Okay, so we're gonna go about medium high heat. Okay, so this is what it should look like. We ended up whipping this for about three minutes. It's nice and fluffy and airy, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start incorporating our powdered sugar. So for powdered sugar, of course, you can already buy it powdered or you can make your own with either a blender, a food processor, um, or even like a coffee, a little coffee grinder, just blitz it up and you have powdered sweetener with the your current sweetener. So you don't have to go out and buy it if you already have like granular, allulose, um, erythritol, monk fruit, any of that stuff, okay? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to incorporate our powdered sweetener. We're going to also incorporate our heavy cream and our vanilla. The only thing we're not, we're gonna hold back on the salt because that's gonna be too taste. But um, once we get started, you're going to start very slowly because the powdered sweetener will go everywhere, okay? So let's go ahead and get that in first. And so we're gonna do two tablespoons of heavy cream. Pour that right in. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, and now we're gonna start really slowly so that it doesn't um, go everywhere. Because trust me, I've made a huge mess. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna stop this. We're gonna scrape the sides and then um, just scrape the sides so that you make sure everything's, you know, well incorporated. Oh, let's taste it. Mmm, so good. Okay, so I just realized that I use salted butter, so I'm not adding any salt. If you use unsalted butter, then you could add a pinch to taste. But um, let's go ahead and whip this up a little longer for about one more minute. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Here is our cream cheese butter cream frosting. Tell me this does not look amazing. Honestly, I wanna sit down and eat this with strawberries. So good. Okay, so what we're gonna do really quickly is check our cake. We're gonna just get a little knife. Ooh, came out clean, which means it's done. So let's get it out. Beautiful, look at that baby. Wow. Okay, so our cake is out, looks beautiful. We're gonna flip this little guy over. We're gonna use this napkin so I don't burn my fingers off. And we're going to flip. Okay. Beautiful. So now what we're gonna do is let this cool. So we're gonna let it cool for at least 15, 20 minutes because if you put your buttercream on right now, it's just gonna melt, like you'll ruin it. So we'll let this cool off and then we'll come back and we'll frost it. Okay, so now that our cake is cooled, we have our buttercream frosting here, which is our cream cheese buttercream frosting. And what I was thinking, because of course, like I wanna make it super cute, um, I have this little stencil and I was thinking about cutting a little heart out right in the center. So we're gonna do that. 
so cute. And then we're gonna uh, plate this separately, but let me get it out. Oh my god. Okay, now we're gonna start icing it. So just grab a little and just gonna smooth it out. Okay, so I tried to smooth this out as best as possible. Um, what I decided to do was, you know how I cut out the little heart? So I'm thinking we're just gonna place it right back in there. And now you're gonna actually be able to see the heart shape. How cute is that? Look at that. What do you think? Tilt it up there. I was thinking about filling it, filling the center in with strawberries, but I kind of decided to go with this. Should I have, what do you think? Should I have gone with the strawberries or? This is cute. So this is our red velvet cake with a cream cheese frosting. Tell me this does not look so perfect. This is gonna be the perfect cake, whether it's for a birthday, for Valentine's Day, just for any special occasion but I'm super, super proud and happy, not only because it looks beautiful, but it tastes absolutely delicious. So once you make it, of course, come back, let me know what you, th you know, how it turned out and what you think, because this is one of my favorite recipes. So of course, let's go ahead and dig in, do a little taste test here. I had to ruin my little cake for the taste test, but look at that. Mm. And the frosting is everything, so cheers. Mm. It's just like a regular red velvet cake. You have to try this. Okay guys, so if you're a huge fan of red velvet, this is your cake. You have like, look no further. You have to try this. It honestly, it's just, it tastes like a regular red velvet cake. And I decided to make this in a heart shape, but of course you can use any baking, regular baking pan, even the spring form pans, anything that you typically bake in, you can totally do that. You can actually even make these into cupcakes. So if that's what you prefer, you can do that for like portion control. But overall, the main point here is that it tastes delicious. So I can't wait for you guys to give this a try. And of course, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you have your post notifications on so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you still want a little bit more of me, then make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. And I just launched my blog at lowcarblove.com, so make sure that you go take a look at that because I have all my recipes on there that are actually printable for you now. And again, thank you so much for joining me and being here with me today on this video. I love you so much and I will see you on the next video. Mwah.